Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gemba Red, and today we're going to do a quick test of monitoring a heat lamp for skin temperature increase. I just did a couple quick tests with an LED panel that was high intensity, and I didn't really find much of a, an increase in temperature, uh, maybe point. Uh, two or 0.3 Celsius increase over uh, four or five minutes. Uh, so that really wasn't concerning. But what I am concerned about is in the future, if, keep, if companies keep increasing intensity higher and higher, then you get more heat as long, along with the photobiomodulation effects. So we have to figure out how to manage that heat, how to understand it responsibly and safely. And, you know, these heat guns are, are all over the place. They, they check your temperature, um, you know, and they were used throughout the pandemic and whatnot. So maybe we could repurpose them and they're cheap on Amazon or whatever, and you can monitor your safety and your skin temperature with with this product. You know, even in the photobiomodulation literature, they, they measure intensity for a lot of different devices and, and in certain contexts to make sure the skin temperature rises not too much, especially like they know, you know, one of the studies I was just reading was because they were concerned about high intensity lasers and all the, the benefits some companies are, are promoting for high intensity, but they wanted to check the skin temperature. So that's the same thing we're doing here. We want to start looking at skin temperature with LEDs. And I'm going to show it right now with a heat lamp as more of a dramatic example of what we should be looking for in the future as LED panels keep going higher and higher with, with the intensity and with the power output. They always say it's good. And again, um, you know, rather than buying an intensity meter or, or you know, you can't really rely on the intensity numbers from uh, companies, and even if you do have an accurate intensity number, your body will absorb differently than, you know, than my body. You know, everyone's body is different, and that's why there's a lot of bio-individuality with how to dose LED panels and, and photobiomodulation. That's why there's such big ranges of dosing and, and you know, in the, in the science, and we can't be clear about how much or how little. Um, but we do know we don't want excessive amount of intensity because that just gets converted into heat. Uh, by our skin. You know, the energy has nowhere else to go. It just becomes heat, raises your skin temperature. Uh, too much uh, temperature, you know, is is not is counterproductive. It, it creates more ROS, which leads to the biphasic dose response, which means you get a lack of benefits. And then really high, uh, if you get above, uh, you know, 41 or, or even up to about 45 in that range, if, especially with sustained or repeated exposures to that range, then you get skin problems, skin breakdown, collagen breakdown, uh, you know, and it doesn't matter where the heat's coming from, if it's red and near infrared LEDs, if it's a heat lamp, if it's a heat pad you put on the skin, you know, that's that's obviously the biggest uh, place it's documented, uh, but it doesn't matter. Heat is heat, um, so we have to watch out for too much heat, so we're just going to do a quick experiment with, uh, just to show you the heat lamp, and, and how you can really easily overheat your skin if you're not thinking about these things. And like I said, if we're, if we're not thinking about it for heat lamps, and again, you can use this, these tips for your heat lamps if you enjoy them. I enjoy them sometimes. Um, and, you know, that's obviously uh, currently a practical use for, for this is if, you're, if you like heat lamps or far infrared or, or, th or uh, heat pads or whatever, uh, it's a good way because even with the heat pads, um, you want to, you know, again, you're trying to heat yourself, but again, not too much and cause too much um, problems or, or breakdown. Um, so again, we'll we'll just go through that and then keep it in mind if we find high intensity panels, maybe we'll do this test again and, and see if we can get a, a high skin temperature reading with an LED panel. I think it's going to happen. I think it could be happening soon. And like I said, with people having different skin, skin types, it will affect them more than others so you know and you know again it's a cheap pack cheap way to monitor uh easier than uh getting an intensity meter that most people don't really know what those numbers mean anyway um so let's let's take a look so now i've got a real heat lamp um set up here and i want to check the premise that you know I, I could be measuring a skin temperature increase with with a heat lamp like this i'm going to be pretty close to my skin um from the distance of the face of the lamp about eight inches away. Um, a lot of times heat lamps advise being uh, 18 inches away or, or more. Um, so again, like I said, I'm just trying to um, prove to myself uh, that this is a viable um, experiment to even try to consider for heat lamps and LEDs and making sure your skin temperature is safe. So let's just check uh, the skin again before. So we're back to 35.9. So I'm kind of that seems to be kind of my normal temperature area. 
and let me get my timer. Okay, so let's start. And obviously I just immediately feel heat as opposed to LED. I feel heat all the way, all the way around now. And this is a FET electric uh, heat lamp bulb, but I do like this bulb. This is a good one, good brand, very affordable. You can even find it in uh, hardware stores and, and local stores. Um, so it's a good brand, you know, you don't need to spend a lot of money. All the incandescent heat lamps are the same technology, just a filament and a red glass bulb. You know, if anyone says they've got anything more special, then they're really fudging, uh, fudging reality for you. Yeah, I do feel, I mean, the heat is hot enough that, um, you know, you shouldn't override your, your temperature sensitivity. Even if everyone says, oh, it's so safe, it's so safe. Uh, if your, your eyes hurt or your skin hurts or you're feeling a burning sensation like I am right now, you would follow your instincts and pull away. Um, so, you know, I, I just worry a lot of people just um, ignore their instincts and, and do, uh, you know, just kind of listen to other people and then don't really follow what is common knowledge. Okay, so we're at two minutes. Let's turn it off because I turn it off because I think um, the reflection could mess up my measurement. Oh, it says, <laughs> it says hi. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That means, that means I got uh, 42.1. Oh yeah, causing some real, some breakdown here. 42.6, uh-oh. We're, we're losing, we're losing them. 39, you know, my skin is, is probably acclimating, you know, I got the, the, the thing off, so my skin's, you know, returning to normal, the, the pain sensation's going away, you know, the heat is so, 41 point, so this thing is, yeah, I'm, uh, and this is a hypertherm, you know what I mean, so they would not let me into restaurants or th theaters um, if I had such a high temperature, um, so, so, you know, my experiment did work, I, I, I jumped up, we went past, um, I should get a better meter that actually shows me the number above, you know, 41 or 42 or wherever it maxes out. So, cause I want to know up to like 45. Um, but you know, this experiment is, is obviously valid. Obviously we use the heat lamp, which has some of the longer wavelengths that gets absorbed more superficially. Um, but again, that's, that's the premise. We don't want to give ourselves skin hyperthermia with any device, if it's LED and super high intensity, eventually we'll get to this point where it becomes a problem. With heat lamps, obviously distance is your friend. You wanna increase that distance so you don't feel any overheating of the skin. And again, you can get a cheap device if you, you know, some people don't have that skin sensitivity. You know, you lose it with age or you lose it with certain conditions. Um, so you might want this to make sure you're not overheating your skin. Even with a heat lamp, you only wanna, you know, let your skin go up a couple degrees in temperature um, and you get the benefits of heat without overdosing your skin. So that's the, 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 the thing, you know, maybe we could do more tests with different heat lamps and different distances to make sure we understand the safe distance to use different heat lamps. Um, you know, that's obviously a practical thing to think about right now. And then in the future, we should look, be looking at what's going on with these high intensity LED panels and which ones are going to start causing heating issues. So just to recap, what we saw was we were using a 250 watt uh, near infrared uh, red coated incandescent heat lamp and uh, we were only eight inches away and that's much closer than normally is recommended. Usually I see it's about 18 inches away you want to be. And we were only doing that exposure for two minutes. And even within that short two minute time frame, we saw a rapid increase in skin temperature. The starting temperature was about 36 Celsius and it went up to probably about 42 Celsius. So that was a very rapid increase. That's why I started laughing because it was so ridiculous of how fast it heated up. I didn't even expect that. In terms of Fahrenheit, uh, that would be about 97 degrees Fahrenheit starting point and then went up to 107 degrees Fahrenheit which again is really hot hotter than a fever hotter than you know what anyone would normally expect their skin temperature to go so you know it's very concerning uh, temperature increase and again that's correlated with um, detrimental effects and and biphasic dose response at best or worse is breakdown of collagen and breakdown of, of skin um, so you know we really need to watch out for that and again it had to do with the distance even with the heat lamp the same rules apply the more distance you have the less intensity 
that you're exposed to. Same thing with LED panels. If the high powered LED panels I claim to be super high intensity, uh, you might need to start using that distance further away to make sure you don't get overdosed. And that uh, may be a cheap way to monitor if you're getting overdosed um, is to check your skin temperature. And everyone's skin response will be a little bit different based on your bio and individuality and so that's why this could be a really good hack to monitor your dose you want to make sure your skin temperature doesn't increase more than just a couple degrees at most um, and not get beyond maybe that 39 uh, celsius mark and keep it below that then you'll know that you're doing proper dosing and staying in that photobiomodulation realm that's non-thermal realm and that's where you know most of the science is around is the non-thermal effects of light um, so, again, I think this is a good hack. It uh, could be something to try out. Maybe we'll do some more testing with it in the future. And uh, let us know what you think. Thanks for tuning in.